I'm uh, commenting as an author and as an editor. I was seven years editor of the Proceedings of the Royal Society um, and one of the world's oldest scientific journals. So I speak from both sides. To take the author seriously, even if you have strong criticisms of the paper, uh, and if there are aspects of the presentation which you think should be improved, don't hesitate to say so. I mean, sometimes um, uh, authors really resent referees' comments when they think the referees misunderstood the paper. But my reaction to that, both as an author and an editor, is that, well, if the referee has misunderstood the paper, uh, the author should take the referee seriously and think, well, maybe other people will make a similar misunderstanding, and so it's a good thing at that early stage to rewrite whatever bits of the paper are being criticised to avoid that misunderstanding. And that works both ways, actually. So that's one piece of advice that I give. Uh, and if be respectful even if you don't um, uh, rate the paper very highly and if you're, if you're critical, confine your criticisms to scientific matters and not any other. Peer review is a human activity, so it isn't perfect. But I think that the system we've evolved now, where the reviewer knows the author's name but the author doesn't know the reviewer's name, is about as good as it's possible to get. I don't feel very strongly about me being anonymous as, uh, as a referee, but uh, I still think on balance that it's better. So yes, I think the present system, imperfect though it is, works as well as any other. To me, it is, like a lot of social media, a kind of random noise. I don't use Facebook, I don't use Twitter. Uh, I don't object to people who do, but as I say, I prefer quietly thinking about things, publishing a paper when I know what I want to say, and if somebody wants to comment on it, they're very welcome either to write to me directly or, if they have something serious, to write a paper themselves and let that be peer-reviewed. So. I'm not fundamentalist about it, but I'm not enthusiastic personally about uh, this post-refereeing. I would then want to get on with something else. I don't want to have to keep going back to the same uh, paper that I've just written. It doesn't mean that I'm immune from criticism. I in indulge in, engage in long scientific correspondences with people who write to me about things. And sometimes I'm wrong, sometimes I'm not. No, not really, because I think it's it's fairly well understood. I mean, you you often hear now, which you used not to, uh, when something uh, is presented by one of the non-technical media, the BBC, for example. You now hear this result has not been peer-reviewed, or this result has been. Often, it's related not to physics; it's uh, health uh, health related. No, no. Sometimes in in with cosmology or astronomy, people do say this result has been peer-reviewed or it has not. So, and I think what people know about this, namely that some experts are consulted who, uh, who, who know about the subject and give their opinions on the manuscript that they've scrutinised carefully. I think that's pretty well understood and I think going into the gory details is about what kind of appeal procedures disgruntled authors have is not really, wouldn't be necessary. I don't want to give the impression that I think peer review is perfect. As I said at the beginning, it's a human activity. It's a bit like democracy. It's, the, it's a terrible thing, but better than any of the alternatives. Um, we make mistakes. As, I, as, as editor, I made mistakes, and some of my referees made mistakes. Sometimes they were uh, overturned on appeal, and mistakes being to reject the paper, which actually had some serious content, which the referee didn't appreciate, or I, as editor, didn't appreciate. So this can happen, but uh, I don't see how that can be avoided by any sensible system.